Hey guys, welcome to Jack's Beautiful You. I am super excited for today's video. Today we're doing a perfume haul and I have some goodies here. I can barely contain myself because I have some goodies here. Most of these were blind buys. One of them was not a blind buy. I have one perfume here that isn't new, but I need to update you guys on my thoughts on them because I told you I would. I have a couple of lotions. I have some good stuff here that I need to share with you, so I'm excited. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jackie. I do mostly perfume, beauty, and makeup on this channel. If you are into that kind of content, I would love it if you would subscribe. To my returning subscribers, thank you guys so much for all your continued support. I really, truly appreciate you. If you're interested in seeing the new perfumes I've added into my collection, then just keep on watching. Okay guys, before we get started, I want to share with you this beautiful bouquet of roses that was sent to me by Rose Forever. I got mine in this little marble looking box, which you can pick out all different kinds of designs on their website. They reached out to me and asked if I was interested in getting one and I couldn't resist because look at this, you guys, look at how absolutely gorgeous this is. I am in love with this. Okay, here's the thing about me and flowers. I love flowers. I absolutely love flowers. Who doesn't love flowers, right? But I always tell my husband not to get flowers because they die. Like they just, you know, in a couple of days, I think maybe a week tops it lasts. And you spent all this money on flowers that just die and then they don't smell very good and you have to throw them out. And I, it's just such a waste of money in my opinion. I'd rather buy a perfume, you know? But these flowers last a year up to a year and I just absolutely love that. So I picked out this white marble box with this beautiful purple. Purple's my absolute favorite color. I'm so excited that they sent this to me. I think this is gonna look fantastic. Actually, I already found a spot for it. I have it downstairs on my mantle and it looks perfect. So I am excited because this is gonna last me a year and they're very, very beautiful. So thank you very much to them. So they're a company based out of New York. They started in 2019, and this is what they do. They they preserve basically flowers and make them last for up to a year. They're vegan. All the material they use for their boxes are vegan. The dyes and the pigments that they use are all allergen free. They're handcrafted by professional florists, I think is what they're called, right? Florists? Yeah. <laughs> they're just so pretty. I, I really like this. Uh, if you're looking for some decor that will actually last, if you like you know, roses, I think that you would really like this. Go on their website and check them out. I will leave all their information in the description box. They have all different kinds of designs. You can get this in the, they have circle ones, they have squares. I think they even have some in heart shapes. They have all different colored roses. It was really difficult for me to pick out what color I wanted because they have some really cool colors. Now, as you can see, I want to point out there's a little flower here that has this little spot. And I actually like that. I like that they kept that in here because these look really Real. You know, these look like, these are real roses and they don't look like fake flowers. So anyway, I just adore this bouquet of roses and thank you to Rose Forever for sending them to me. I really do appreciate it. Okay, and also I always forget to tell you guys what's on my eyes. Today I am using the brand new My Dream Palette by Natasha Denona. I did a full dedicated review on this. I did three looks, one palette. I also did this look. I filmed this look today on my Instagram that should be up shortly. It's not up yet, but it should be up shortly. So if you're interested to see how I got this look today, it will be on my Instagram. Make sure that you're following me over there so you can see other content that I do on my Instagram as well. Okay, so first off, I wanna do an update real quick before we get into the haul. I had told you guys in a previous video that I was thinking about decluttering from Juliana's Perfumes Head Over Heels. This is a dupe for Killian's Rolling in Love, and this was sent to me, by the way, by the brand. I wasn't sure how I felt about this when I first sprayed it. It has a very bitter almond note in here, and I just wasn't sure. It does smell very similar to Rolling in Love. Like I think they did a really great job duping that fragrance, but I just couldn't get past that like bitter almond when I first tried it. However, my mind has completely changed over this fragrance and I absolutely adore it. I don't know what happened. I think it's just the beginning. It's the opening of this perfume that I don't like and I still don't really like the opening, but it doesn't last for very long. And then the sweetness starts to come through and it doesn't smell just like this bitter 
almond scent. Although when I do put my nose to my skin, it does smell a little bit bitter almond, but the way that this dries down and it's the sillage, the sillage that's around you with this perfume is so good that I have decided to keep this and I have really been enjoying wearing this one. I really do like this perfume. It's just the weirdest perfume that I have tried. Like I have never had a perfume that I didn't really like the way it smelled when I pressed my nose to my skin but I was addicted to the way it smells in the air. Has that ever happened to anyone else? Because that's what this perfume does for me, and it is so weird. But this is a compliment magnet. I have worn this a few times because I keep testing it out, and it's actually not on my tray for September, but I keep pulling for it because I keep trying to make up my mind what I wanna do with this fragrance, and I finally decided I'm gonna keep it because it seems like every time I wear this, I get a compliment. It really smells incredible. It, it is the sillage that I love. This is just this delicious, powdery, almond, vanilla bubble that is around you. Just this like powdery, vanilla, almond, like irisy, kind of bubble that's just follows you around all day and it's just so it's so pleasant it's just incredibly pleasant so I decided that I truly do love wearing this one I just have to get past the opening and not press my nose to my skin as long as I don't do that I'm good and I truly enjoy this one so this one is staying in my collection okay so the other one that I got this one is not a blind buy all the rest of the perfumes I'm going to talk about today are blind buys but this one was not I had tested this first before I bought it this is by the House of Oud and this is Dates Delight. I tested this one out a few months ago and I told you guys I was madly in love. I I babied that sample that I had and I just knew that this was going to be in my collection at some point and I finally couldn't resist any longer because this is addicting. This is rich. This is decadent. This is a surprise to me that I love it because <laughs> I never really thought that I would be in love with a with a perfume that came from the House of Oud. That's not a house that's been on my radar because it's called the House of Oud and I don't really like Oud very much, but this is incredible. And now I have another perfume on my wish list, uh, What About Pop? because I've heard some really great things about that fragrance, so I'll probably end up getting that one. But this one had been on my wish list for a couple of months, and I have no regrets. This is absolutely gorgeous. So there's definitely dates in here. There's dates and there's peony in the opening, and you definitely get the dates. Very realistic dates in here. And this smells rich and decadent. If you like rich, decadent, indulgent kind of perfumes, that are kind of like along the same lines of Atar Collection's Cult at Night or Killian's Angel Share. Like, they don't smell the same. This doesn't smell like those perfumes, but they have that same very rich smelling, and not rich like as in money, rich as in like flavorful, super rich and decadent and indulgent type of fragrances that are semi-gourmands. This one is not a full-on gourmand because it has peony in here, and I believe it also has labdanum in here as well. So the floral notes in here, you can make them out a little bit, and I like that they're in here because it keeps it from being an over-the-top foodie gourmand, like a literal food. Otherwise, this kind of smells like a very rich, decadent date dessert. It's it's beautiful, but I do like the touch of florals in here that keeps it from being like something you would actually think you want to eat. There's cinnamon in here and there is a big dose of cinnamon, which I love. I have discovered that I am a sucker for cinnamon. Like cinnamon in my perfumes is something I truly enjoy and I've been craving cinnamon perfumes and I've been buying a lot of cinnamon <laughs> perfumes. I seem to just love it. There's also a lot of caramel in here. There's a lot of tonka bean. There's honey. There's sugar. So it is very sweet and it is very dessert-like. This is absolutely perfect for fall. I really like the bottle too. I think the bottle is gorgeous. I know some people don't like these like egg-shaped bottles, but what I love about the House of Oud is that everything is hand-painted. Nobody has a bottle that 
looks exactly like this one does. And I just love that. I love the concept. I think it's super pretty. And now House of Oud is definitely on my radar. All right, let's get into the blind buys. So all of the perfumes I have here are successes. Well, okay, there's one that I'm not sure about, but most of them were wild successes. So the first one is by Jean-Paul Gaultier, and this is Scandal by Night. This is a perfume I've had on my radar for a very long time. It's been sitting on my wish list. I'm a huge, huge fan of the original Scandal. I was a little hesitant on this one because it has a cherry note in here, and I've heard some people say that the cherry smells medicinal to them. Sometimes when you have like a really thick, syrupy, sweet fragrance, and then you add cherry in, it can register in my brain as like cough syrup. Luckily though, this does not do that at all. So I had this on my wish list for a very long time and I had just been like, you know, dragging my feet and not pulling the trigger and not doing it until one day I was watching Claire Smith here on YouTube. If you have not checked her out, you need to. She has an awesome perfume channel. And anyway, she was doing, I think it was her top 10 for life perfumes and this was one of them. And she was talking about how her husband just thinks she smells so edible when she she wears this and I was like that's it that's it <laughs> that's it you convinced me I'm gonna just do it I'm just gonna pull the trigger and I'm gonna buy it and I did and it was an absolute success so I'm not gonna go over all the notes with you but there are quite a few of the same notes that are in here as the original there's definitely honey which you can definitely make out there's orange in here as well some citruses which I definitely pick up on, and I do pick up on that original Scandal DNA, but that added cherry that's in here, oh my gosh, you guys, it's so good. If you like cherry fragrances, this is like that honey-dipped cherry. You know that gourmand, edible, yummy, delicious cherry? This smells so good. You have to like sweet perfumes in order to like this, though. Otherwise, just look the other way. <laughs> Go in a different direction. And in the base, you have tonka bean, vanilla, patchouli. What I did notice that's different in here is there's no licorice. So if the original Scandal was too much for you, I think for a lot of people, that licorice and patchouli combination, which I actually truly love, I think the original Scandal was just a little too much for some people. Because I have noticed that that fragrance is stronger than this one. That one feels stronger. That one's like a monster of a perfume. It fills up a room. It is very loud. It is very sweet. There's a ton of honey and there's that patchouli and licorice combination in the base, which I personally adore. But for some people, it was like just too much. This one seems a little less in your face. This one's not quite so loud. It's still strong. It's a great performing perfume. I have no issues with it, but it does seem a little bit more wearable. The cherry's super gorgeous in here, and there's no, like I said, there's no licorice note in the base, which I think can be just not, for, it, licorice isn't everybody's cup of tea. So this one I find to be the more wearable version and I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I love both. I love both. I recommend both. I think they're both absolutely gorgeous, sexy, edible, sweet, delicious, yummy honey scents that I adore. But yeah, I really like this one. But I do think it's a little bit more toned down from the original Scandal. So if the original was too much for you, give this one a try if you like honey and cherry and sweet fragrances. Great performing perfume, and I'm so glad to finally have this one in my collection. Okay, so I'm part of a perfume Facebook group, and every once in a while people will give, you know, these layering combination recommendations, and somebody asked the question, what should I buy to smell like blueberries? And there were some really fun answers in that comment. So I was scrolling through and reading and there were quite a few people who mentioned this fragrance. It made me super curious. And this is Midnight Fantasy by Britney Spears. So there's actually no blueberry in here, but it kind of comes across as blueberry. So in the opening, you have plum and sour cherry and raspberry. And somehow those fruits, I think, kind of mixed together to smell like a blueberry, <laughs> which is interesting, but that's I mean, this looks like a blueberry, doesn't it? Like this bottle is kind of cute. I actually like it. It looks like a big, fancy, sparkly blueberry. And I, I don't know, I kinda, I'm kinda into it. The middle notes are orchid, iris, freesia, and then you have vanilla, amber, and musk in the base. This is a beautiful fragrance, and I was surprised at how much I like this. This smells like blueberry to me. I also get a bit of cherry. 
It's like a cross between a blueberry and a cherry to my nose, but really this smells like a, like a cherry blueberry starburst. Okay, so I don't think they have blueberry starburst, but if they did, this is what it would smell like. So then in that same comment, somebody said that they layered this fragrance with a new Bath & Body Works lotion. This is blueberry sugar pancakes, and I rushed out and bought this because I don't know what my deal is with wanting to smell like blueberries these days, but I just do. <laughs> just want to smell like blueberries. And the idea of this lotion sounded so appealing to me. Oh my God, I love this. If you love blueberry smelling things, if you don't mind smelling quite literally like blueberry pancakes, because that's what this smells like. Mixing these two together is so good. I love the combination of these two. It is so fun and has been such an enjoyable combination. Now, I will say the only downside to this is the performance. So it actually performs really well while it lasts, but this only lasts a couple hours on me. Normally, that is a one-way ticket out of my collection, <laughs> but for the price, I can't be too mad at it. I think I paid like $16 for this bottle. So as I mentioned, I am on a blueberry kick, so I did have to get by Guerlain La Petite Robe Noir Intense. This, I got a notification. This had been out of stock and was incredibly difficult to find and get, but I got a notification. It was back in stock from Fragrance Buy, and I snatched it up as soon as I got the notification because I have been wanting this fragrance for a very long time. Can we just talk about this bottle? Because this is absolutely gorgeous. I love the little black dress and the color of this blue juice is, oh, I love it, you guys. It's so pretty. This was a surprise for me because this is not exactly what I was thinking. For some reason, I had it in my mind that this was a very sweet, gourmand type of fragrance, which it is sweet. Top notes, you have cotton candy and blueberry, raspberry, cassis, and bergamot. And so I was just expecting this like super gourmand, almost like blueberry muffin-esque type of situation which I do get a touch of that in here. There's definitely blueberry in here. You definitely smell the blueberry. You definitely smell the cotton candy in here. So it is sweet gourmand-ish, like it has gourmand touches. There's also some floral notes in the mid. So you've got rose, orange blossom, and jasmine in here. And then in the base, you do have vanilla, but then you have patchouli, sandalwood, and musk. And that, those base notes are strong. The patchouli and white musk are very strong in here to my nose. I definitely pick them out. And when I first sprayed this, honestly, the first thing I thought of was Coco Mademoiselle. Now, this doesn't smell like Coco Mademoiselle, okay? If you took Coco Mademoiselle and this fragrance and put them side by side, they're not dupes for each other. But this definitely has like that patchouli Coco Mademoiselle vibe. That same kind of patchouli that's in Coco Mademoiselle, I should say, is the same kind of patchouli that's in here, which isn't a problem for me because if you've been watching my channel, you know I adore that type of patchouli. That really clean smelling, warm patchouli that gives fragrance depth and just makes fragrances smell so like elevated and classy and sophisticated to my nose. That's how Coco Mademoiselle smells to me and that type of patchouli is definitely in here and it is definitely present. There's a musk in here as well that kind of gives it that kind of helps that patchouli to smell super clean as well. But if you're expecting a straight up sweet blueberry gourmand cotton candy scent, I think you're going to be surprised. You have to be a fan of patchouli and musk in order to enjoy this fragrance, I think, because to my nose, it's very, very prominent. Now, I love it. I did try layering these two together, and I thought it was such a beautiful combination. This obviously amps up the blueberry. So if you like this perfume, but you want a little bit more blueberry, layer it with this lotion because these two together are absolutely divine. Okay, and I did blind buy a lotion. So this is by Sol de Janeiro, and this is the Bomb Dia Bright Cream. I had heard from a few people that this smells like Dama Bianca, and I was very curious about that because I absolutely love Dama Bianca by Zerzhoff. I have this one ounce bottle, and as you can see, I have really been loving. <laughs> I'm going to have to get a full size bottle of this because this is one of my favorite perfumes. This is one of my favorite blind buys of 2022, and I absolutely adore this fragrance. 
but the only problem is is that it doesn't project quite as strongly as I personally like. It's okay, it's moderate, but I do have to overspray in order to get the projection that I want. The longevity is pretty good, but I feel like I wish it just projected a little bit more. So when I heard there was a lotion that smells like it, I was all about it because I thought, well, that'll probably help to, you know, amplify the projection of the fragrance and this does smell very similar to Dama Bianca. Very similar. It's different. I mean it's not exactly the same but it definitely has the same vibe as Dama Bianca for sure. So I have layered these two together and this definitely does help with the performance of Dama Bianca. So I just wanted to mention this real quick. If you are a big fan of Dama Bianca but you just want the projection to be a little bit better, try layering it with this cream because it is a match made in heaven. It smells absolutely incredible. Okay, speaking of Zerjoff, I did blind buy yet another Zerjoff fragrance. This is Bouquet Ideal and look at this bottle, you guys. Look Look at how beautiful this bottle is. I love this color. I've really been into this like dark blood red kind of color lately. Okay, this is the third Zerjoff I have blind bought and this is the third wild success that I have had. Every single bottle of Zerjoff that I have bought, I have blind bought and they have all been crazy wild successes. This is no exception. I adore this fragrance. My eyes rolled in the back of my head when I smelled this and my husband loves this. He commented on this fragrance a few times and he told me that this was one of his top top fragrances on me. In the opening you have a cinnamon. <laughs> Obviously we're seeing a pattern here, right? And then there's nutmeg, which I pretty much adore nutmeg as well. Any kind of like spicy, yummy, like cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, all those types of spices I seem to just absolutely adore. There's Gayak wood in here, there's sandalwood, there's Virginian cedar, there's some vanilla, there's also tobacco blossom in here which I think smells incredible. Um, there's a little bit of musk in here. This is a woody, vanilla, warm, spicy, cinnamon, delicious fragrance. And the wood in here, I was a little bit nervous because there's Gayak wood in here and I wasn't sure, you know, that doesn't always go so great for me, but it just smells divine in here. The, it, the way that this is blended together, it smells incredible. And the performance of this is really good. This lasted on me all day long. So if you like woody, spicy, warm, vanilla fragrances, you need to get your nose on this because this is gorgeous. Okay, so now that I'm in the mood for fall and I'm kind of looking for those super cozy perfumes, I really want to try out Choco Violet by Mancera and this one is a very chocolatey violet warm cozy sweet very comforting scent this reminds me a lot of Chocolate Greedy by Montal I was a little nervous about getting this because I didn't want one that smelled exactly like Chocolate Greedy because I already own Chocolate Greedy and I thought well if they smell exactly the same. I probably won't want to have both of them, but I will say that to me they do smell slightly different. They do smell very similar, don't get me wrong, but to me Chocolate Greedy is a bit more powdery. It smells more like powdery chocolate like Nesquik and this one is less powdery to me. This one smells more like chocolate chocolate, not just powdery Nesquik chocolate. Also the violet in here I was very nervous about because sometimes the just like cherry, violet can come across as medicinal to me. It can come across as cough syrup if it's mixed with something very sweet and thick, but it's not. To me, this is just a sweet, delicate violet. Uh, and the other notes, it just goes together so well. It's, it's so good. I really enjoyed this perfume. There's also orange in here, which kind of gives off that chocolate greedy vibe. So to me, chocolate greedy is very powdery, Nesquik chocolate with some like dried fruits that kind of come across as like orange to me. The orange that's in here is pretty similar to the orange that's in Chocolate Greedy, but that added violet in here just really does something for me. So to me, I feel like they're different enough to justify having both. And it also has hazelnut in here as well, which I do pick up on, which I think makes it a little different from Chocolate Greedy. I love that like hazelnut touch to this perfume. I think that's what makes the chocolate in here feel a little bit more on the creamy side, whereas Chocolate Greedy is more powdery. So this is a little bit more creamy, yummy, chocolate, 
sweet candied like violet. There's Madagascar vanilla in here and there's some musk in here as well. I think this is so cozy. Like this is sweater weather fall in a bottle. If I am at home and I'm going to cuddle on the couch, I'm going to curl up with a big fuzzy sweater and read a good book or something like that or watch a movie. This is the kind of perfume that I want to just make me feel so warm and cozy. Chocolate Greedy has that same effect on me. You know, those are fall winter perfumes for me and I definitely consider this a success. I enjoy this one quite a bit. Performance is a non-issue. It's a Mancera fragrance. It performs really well. Beautiful sillage. Lasted all day when I tested it out and yeah, I really do enjoy this one. I'm super glad I finally got it. This one has been on my wish list for a really long time and I think it's so cozy and so beautiful. Okay, and last up, this is the one I'm not sure about. I did just get a travel size of this because I I knew I, I wasn't sure, you know? I'm, I'm getting better and better at blind buying. I know what I like and I'm usually, I'm usually right. <laughs> Not always, but usually. This one I was like, mm, I don't know if I'm going to like it. And that's kind of how I feel. So this is by the House of Commodity and this is Milk. This is the bold version. You know, I'm wondering if maybe I did make a mistake getting the bold because to me this smells quite masculine. I'm really confused about this fragrance because this leans a little bit masculine to me, but man, I love the way that this smells. It's really good. I'm going to wear it and I'm going to see how I feel. So main accords in here are wood powdery, sweet, lactonic, amber, and musky, and I would definitely agree with the order of that for sure. The order of those accords. You have milk and marshmallow in the opening. This smells like by the fireplace to me. This reminds me of by the fireplace, but if you made it a little bit sweeter and more lactonic. I'll have to keep you guys updated. It's definitely a good performing perfume. Like I said, I got the bold version, so this projects and is very strong, and I didn't have any issue with it. I just put one spray on the back of my hand and it was like, whew, you know, <laughs> there was a cloud of this around me and it's actually really pleasant. I just don't know how comfortable I'm gonna feel wearing it. So I will keep you updated on this. All right, you guys, and that is it for today's video. That is my perfume haul. Like I said, most of them were wild successes. And I just am so in love with so many of these perfumes. I just am so happy to have them in my collection and I cannot wait to start wearing them. Thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I hope everybody is having an amazing day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.